What's up guys, Elphys here, and today we're going to be doing another Han Versus. This time pitting uh, Poliwag Priest versus Thunderbringer. And Versus is where I do one versus one, solo mid. I'm going to tell you who's going to win, why they're going to win, and what the loser should be doing. Okay, let's jump into this guys, here we go. Okay, so first of all, who's going to win? Well, this is not a cut and dry normal scenario. So first of all, uh, it's a little bit up to player skill. It's a little bit of an equal uh, footing, and I'll tell you why it's equal. Uh, and this is getting into the why they're going to win. So it's equal in the sense that uh, Thunderbringer is gimped by his range. However, he is gifted by his uh, fairly significant burst damage, okay? Polywog Priest does not have quite the burst damage that um, Thunderbringer has. He has a little bit with his, uh, with his jolt, and then he's got a little bit of uh, dot damage with the tongue tie and, you know, of course, auto attacks. However, Poliwag Priest is gifted in the sense that, or, or advantage, advantageous, sorry, in the sense that he has the longer range by far. Poliwag's Priest range is approximately 550, 550. Thunderbringer's about 350, 350, yeah. Okay, so he has a 200 range gain on him. That is fairly significant. People, a lot of the time, will underestimate the, uh, the benefit of an incredible range like that. And actually, you'll see it already taking place just, you know, with my poor micro skills. You'll see the fact that, you know, Poliwag is denting um, Thunderbringer's attack damn, uh, Thunderbringer's health. Now the other thing to note is that um, it's not a huge thing. Uh, Poliwag has slightly higher attack damage, so his harass is already slightly a little bit better in that sense. Um, however, what I will say for Thunderbringer is that Thunderbringer has a very, very, very significant amount of burst damage, uh, which Poliwag does not have. Poliwag is gimped in that sense. He doesn't really make it, he doesn't really cut it to the sense that uh, Thunderbringer does when it comes to burst. Thunderbringer, and I'll just briefly mouse over his skills, you guys can look at them in depth. He has quite a bit of burst damage for a, you know, relatively moderate mana cost. It's not, it's certainly not a tiny mana cost, um, but it is, it's a moderate mana cost that he can use significantly, you know, more than Poliwag just spamming whatever he would like over and over again. Uh, his tongue, his tongue tie, or sorry, electric jolt is, is slightly more than the than the average cost of, of uh, Thunderbringer skills early on. Okay, so not only starting with that, he has a little bit more mana. I'm talking, I'm referring to Polywog, of course. He has a little bit more mana, but it really kind of equals out, or actually even I would say favors Thunderbringer more so because his skills cost less and and you know do more damage early on. Uh, and actually, overall in general, they do more damage as well. He's more, he's much more of a bursty hero than Polywog is. Polywog is more of a crowd control hero and a team fight hero. He does a very good job with present uh, with team fight presence. He also does do a fairly good job with ganking, uh, although um, if you have proper wording and such, it's it's not easy to avoid his ganks, but it's it's very doable. Um, so, now that we've talked about who's going to win, I would say, um, in, in my personal, all God's honest opinion, I would say that Thunderbringer would win if he played it correctly, up until 6, and I would say that because Thunderbringer has much more, much more burst damage, and a Thunderbringer, I think skilled enough, could and should probably be able to kill Polywog around 4 or 5 if Polywog gets too ballsy and goes up too far. Um, I don't think he'll do too well when it comes to last hitting. I think Polywog will win when it comes to last hitting um, because of his, you know, increased range, his increased um, damage. He has, uh, a, I would say their attack animation is about equivalent. And maybe some people might argue that, you know, Thunderbringers is a little bit less, but I think they're about the same. Um, regardless, they're, they're, not, they're not a significant difference that it's, you know, really, it's really worth arguing about anyways. Um, so, I would say that, no, get out of here, Thunderbringer. I would say that uh, Poliwag will win last hitting wise, unless you see Thunderbringer using his skills, um, don't die, don't die, using his skills uh, to farm, which a lot of the time you will see them using Chain Lightning to farm creeps, and it will harass a bit as well, so it's not it's not even like you're wasting it just on the creep either. Uh, although, not to say that you know using your skills to farm in, in many cases is wasting it to begin with. So, uh, you will see a Thunderbringer using that to farm a lot, so that you can be used to catch up in farm. It's really not something to say, it's not to say that you would be down and out for the rest of the game, you know, and there's no way of coming back. You could even keep up with him, debatably, uh, depending on how many mana pots you got and things of that nature, how much you can really use is what it would come down to. Um, so, I, I personally think that uh, uh, Thunderbringer will win up to about 4 or 5. Once you hit 6, Poliwag could, ease, could easily win if he gets a nice uh, hex on him and then a war, a, um, a ward trap. Uh, however, you need to be careful, Poliwag, because even if you get the ward trap on him, Thunderbringer can still probably nuke you down um, if you're not careful. It depends on how much health you have and things of that nature, but um, I'm going to go ahead and refresh him just so he doesn't die, because my poor micro skills, you know me guys. Uh, so that's who's going to win. Poly I think uh, Thunderbringer will win up to about 4 or 5, um, where his burst is really just beating the crap out of Polywog, and then I think at 6, Polywog could most certainly put up a fight, and I think it would be a bit on equal footing, depending on who has more health, who has more mana, you know, getting off the full, you know, full 
spells versus not full spells, you know, see maybe you have creeps, things like that, you have a nice rune, things of that nature. Um, you do want to fight for runes, Thunderbringer, however, Polywog should get all the runes. He should probably have a level in his um, hex early on. Uh, sorry, hex, it's actually called um, morph. My mistake, sorry, I'm, I'm used to watching... Um, uh, Honcast, I believe they call it uh, Hex and Honcast, but, uh, so he should have, um, uh, or maybe I've heard it somewhere else, maybe it's Dota or something like that, I'm not sure. Uh, so he should have a level in his Hex, probably by four, uh, in which case, at that point, you probably shouldn't be able to beat him to any of the runes, so just Hex you, and, or sorry, Morph you and run past, uh, and then get the runes. You can damage him, of course, in the side, and, and, you know, if it's worth it, you can try and fight him, maybe if you get an, an event, if you can get out there before him, then it, it could be worth it to an extent. Um, but, you know, you, you would probably have to get out there a, a decent amount before him to make it really um, advantageous for the point that you're going to beat him to it, because uh, you'd have to get out of range of his, of his uh, morph. So, you should be fighting for runes if you can, although Polywog should probably get them once he gets a level on that morph. Before that, though, you could pro you might not have it by the first rune, so you should definitely fight him for the first rune, I think. Um, afterwards, though, uh, it would come down to a bit if, if he wants to die. Once you guys hit six, it's going to come down to a fight for the runes. You guys can easily, you know, do get out for the runes is the point I'm trying to make. So... Um, either player could win, you just want to pick, you know, intelligence fights again, so don't think that I'm saying, you know, you, you'll go kill each other for the runes, one of you will probably die and one will probably live, it's a bit up to, you know, it might depend on farm and things like that, um, you know, who's going to win. Regardless of who's going to win, the loser, in either case, the answer, and it, it does come down to a bit to play and a bit to what level you are in these fights, you know, so, I mean, as you'll see, just the, you know, the base damage and um, the range, Polywog is out harassing and I'm not even really controlling the heroes, so they're just kind of auto-attacking the lanes, you'll see that because of the range and damage, Polywog is basically winning the lane, and, I mean, I'm controlling a bit, but it's basically AI, and of course I'm not using skills and things like that, so there's things like that to keep into account, uh, to take into account, sorry, but just to give you guys an idea of how, you know, it would come down to with auto attacks and last hitting and things like that. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, like I was saying, um, whoever the loser is, regardless, the the answer as to what you're going to be doing is the same. Both of these heroes are phenomenal gankers, okay, they're, they're basically made for ganking. Regardless of which hero it is, Thunderbringer or Polywog, their primary goal is to do work early on in the game, and by do work, uh, that's kind of like a slang term in America, I guess. It, just, it just means to do their job, you know, beat, beat the crap out of people, really, um, which is their jobs in this game. So, they're going to beat the crap out of the enemy heroes uh, for the first, for the first, you know, 15 minutes of the game, that's really their job, and if they have a good start, they can even, you know, you know, bring it into the late game. Um, Polywog scales much better into the late game than Thunderbringer does, in my personal opinion, and I think that's the reason why you rarely see Thunderbringers picked up, because they just don't scale well. They really don't. Um, unfortunately, I love the hero. He's really fun to play for the first, you know, 15, 20 minutes, but they just do not scale well. Uh, it's not their, um, they don't have, they don't have any crowd control, is the problem. Zero crowd control. Zero. I think they have a mini stun here, uh, if I'm, um, yeah, and a mini stun, yeah, so. They do have a mini stun there. Um, let me just refresh him one more time, just so he doesn't die. So, there, that's just it's just stuff you have to think about um, that's kind of why they you don't see Thunderbringer, my personal opinion uh, either way though you you want to be significantly ganking whether you're the loser or the winner the winner should be ganking too but the loser definitely wants to be ganking to make up for their lost lane essentially uh, and you can obviously you want to try and get runes if you can and you want to gank the lane that is closer you know pushed up things like that you know maybe the ones that don't have wards things of that nature but either way their primary role is gankers for the for both of them, although you can use uh, Polywog as a support too. Although if you're playing solo mid, you're it's typically not a support. Not that you couldn't be, I guess, but it's if you're solo mid, it's it'd be rare that you're a support. So uh, just just something to think about. So uh, I believe I've covered it. So thank you for watching once again. I know it's it's a bit of a vague answer for this one because the heroes are, are fairly equally matched in in their mid capabilities and and some people may argue some points here and some points there but i think i've covered it to an extent that gives you knowledge over this the point of the series is to just kind of help you pick you know heroes to fight mid and you know if you see an enemy hero picked that's clearly going to be going mid maybe you shouldn't pick a hero that's obviously going to lose to him you know so that's what i'm trying to get you guys to think about so i hope i hope that's what you have thought about so uh with that being said thank you for watching guys i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something um, and feel free to submit any uh, requests. If you have requests as to which ones you want to see, then by all means, um, let me know in the comments, inbox, whatever you so desire. Um, and once again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something, and I will talk to you guys later. GG, well played, guys. Help us out.